So hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on the ITS World Congress 2015 program highlights. Uh, thank you for joining us for, from all over the world as we can see from the list of participants. Uh, my name is Pamela Valente from Ertico and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. So before starting I would like to give you some quick uh, technical information on how this webinar will be run. So now that you've joined, you'll notice that you are on mute and if you have any problem with the audio or video, please let us know by using the chat session. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please write them in the question pane and there will be an opportunity to have your question answered at the end of uh, the presentation. So uh, let's move on and in the next 45 minutes or so, uh, we will walk you through the program of the Congress to learn what's in store for you about the hot topics of the Congress, sessions, high-level speakers, events, and, our, and activities during the next the week to ensure you make the most of your World Congress experience. So now I would like to introduce and leave the floor to today's panelists, uh, Didier Gortemann, Director of Congresses at Ertico, and Professor Eric Sampson, Program Advisor and Chief Rapporteur for the Congress. Thank you, Pamela. Good morning, good evening uh, to everybody around the world. So we will go through the full week of Bordeaux, which will be uh, full. So first of all, what uh, we want to highlight now is be part of it. So if you are there, that uh, means that you want to be part of it. So just as information, we are waiting 10,000 people. Uh, we want to hear global leaders about tomorrow's business. We want to experience the latest ITS transport technologies, build network and partnership, also visit the, the fabulous city of uh, Bordeaux and enjoy a unique social program. In terms of figures, we have more than 400, 400 exhibitors sh showcasing on 25,000 square meter, more than 270 sessions, 30 live demonstrations eight technical visits, seven topics, we will come back to that, five days to build the network and partnership, three thematic days, and three unique social networking events. So now we will give you a hint to that. Here you see the overview of the program. So we'll start Monday the 5th of October. Uh, you see that we will have a press conference and demonstration for the press. Uh, it in the afternoon, there will be a ministerial roundtable organized by the French Ministry of Transport, and we will start the opening ceremony at 4.30. It will be uh, continued by the exhibition and demonstration ribbon cutting and our welcome reception in the exhibition. The next day, the 6th of October, we will start with the plenary session one, ITS delivering societal changes, and then we will start all the session in parallel. Uh, uh, in parallel of that, we will have demonstration and technical tour as usual, and the exhibition will be open. The gala dinner will be on the Wednesday, and this year we will organize also Bordeaux Wine Feria on the Tuesday 6th. The closing ceremony will be the 9th of October, starting at 1.30, with the conclusion. Uh, plenary session three and the uh, official closing of the Congress. Now, a little bit more detail. So the Monday, as I said, Minister Round Table, opening ceremony and session, welcome reception and <coughs> exhibition opening. Tuesday, the thematic day will be connected and automated driving. Plenary one will be on ITS delivering societal changes and we will have two high level technology summits plug-and-play city, and connected and automated driving. Wednesday, thematic day will be freight and logistics, plenary session two, space for intelligent mobility, and two general public sessions, one autonomous driving and one on big data. Thursday, thematic day will be urban mobility, and in the afternoon we will have also a public afternoon, and one general public session, on mobility and quality of life. 
and we organize also a summit on sustainable urban mobility. Friday, the last plenary session, from personal connectivity to connected mobility, the conclusion from Eric Samson and closing ceremony. Now I will pass the floor to Eric Samson, our chief reporter, to give you more details on the program of the week. Thank you, DDA, and a warm welcome from me. I'm going to walk you through most of these topics. Um, formal opening, well, it won't be that formal. They never are. Um, I can remember opening ceremonies with a jazz band, um, with young girls who turned themselves into pretzels, um, with a, the band of the Grenadier Guards in London, and in Sydney, memorably, somebody came on the stage on a horse. So yes, there's an opening ceremony, and then we move into the business of the Congress. Um, I'll walk through the timetabled sessions, the workshops, exhibition, ancillaries, technicals, demonstrations. I'm not going to say much about uh, the formal closing or the social tours and the pre and post Congress tours. That's all on the website and in the program. The Congress app will guide you through any and all of these. So if you haven't downloaded, very much recommend that you do so. This is the 23rd Congress. Um, we started, it feels like, many, many years ago, 1994 in Paris. And one of the things that delegates have said, regardless of the fact that we're moving around the world, delegates have been saying to us, we'd like some continuity. Yes, we want the new things. We want something that's hot and exciting. But we don't want to have a subject picked up in, say, Detroit, and then forgotten about in, in Bordeaux. We want something that carries on. So if you look at the program, you'll find that there is continuity for us. We've been looking particularly back to the last time the World Congress was in Europe, in Vienna. Our two intermediate European Congresses we're also looking forward to next year in Glasgow, and we've marked up on there some of the things that we think are going to be taken forward to Glasgow. I say we think because until Bordeaux's happened, we can't be certain. There'll be something new that we haven't thought about, and there'll be something that when we look at it, we think, no, it doesn't quite earn its place. It perhaps needs to be dropped. <clears throat> now, to organize the week, Everything has been grouped under these seven headline topics, and you'll find that most of the material available to you is color-coded. So that if you're interested in topic four, you find the color, and then you can find your way through the week simply on the color changes. DDA has mentioned already um, something, again, that delegates have said to us. Um, if you can only come for one day, please don't spread all of the papers on a particular topic across the week, if it's possible, to concentrate them. We've tried as far as we can to do that, and those are the three very large groupings, the connected and automated driving, very, very popular topic this year. Freight and logistics, which for a long time has been the Cinderella, it's not made it to the ball. Uh, it's growing in importance. As cities get bigger, and they attract more people from rural areas, the people have got to be fed, they've got to be given water, they've got to be given resources, their waste has got to be taken away. So freight logistics industry is suddenly becoming very, very important to the way in which cities are run. And then again, with the emphasis on cities, on Thursday, we've got the urban mobility theme. And that, of course, is the public afternoon as well. So it's a very good opportunity for people in the Bordeaux region, very large region of France, come along and see what's going on, find out directly. There's a lot of sessions, and um, can't avoid that. It's a bit like the Olympics. The World Congress is now becoming very large. And in the same way as at the Olympics, it's very difficult to watch the swimming and the athletics and the rowing and the equestrian events. You have to choose. Um, it's the same with the Congress. You do need to focus a little bit and specialize and say, I'm going to follow one particular topic. 
So we've we've had to group things over three different sites. They're all close together. Uh, the plenaries, the executives, and similar things in the Palais de Congrès. And then on the main, the very large main site in Hall 1, the exhibition and associated actions, and in Hall 2, the special interest sessions and the technical scientific paper sessions. The plenaries, these these have attracted enormous interest over the last few years. They, they've been growing in status, I think, as the people who've been speaking at the plenaries themselves represent the very top level of the industry, the top policy makers, the top movers and shakers, as it were. You'll see some very familiar faces there, I'm sure, and in the second list. We have 14 executive sessions, 12 of them have been designed by the three host regions, the green ones by the Americas region, the orange yellow ones by Asia Pacific, and the Bordeaux red colored ones by Europeans. And then down the bottom, the host sessions, these are ones specifically designed and put together by our hosts in the Bordeaux region and in France generally. We think that there's about 23 different countries with you now. You, you are 23 different countries from many continents taking part in this webinar. And just to give you a little insight into the paper sessions, we think there's 47 countries represented. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if that's an underestimate. <clears throat> and slicing that cake a slightly different way, there's the papers spread across the seven headline topics. I mentioned earlier that Connected and Automated was featuring very much this year. Topic two, topic six, between them we've got nearly half of the papers. We've had a tradition which I now realize is 15 years old. It started in Turin where we've given the International ITS Benefits Evaluation and Costs Group, IBEC, We've given them an allocation of sessions which they stage and manage and put together for us. These are very popular, and there they are. I put them up there. Tuesdays and Thursdays nicely joined up following each other. We invented, I think, Vienna. It might have been the year before, but I think it was in Vienna. We started the stakeholder workshops. And the stakeholder workshops and the associated activities, which I'll come on to later, these both reflect the fact that the Congress is becoming a bit like that famous cafe in Paris where if you sit and take a coffee, eventually somebody walks past that you know. And I've often argued to people, if I write a list of, say, 20 people I want to talk to, I'll find 17 of them going to the World Congress but I'll also find five people that I didn't know I wanted to talk to. And because so many people are getting together in the same time and same place, this tradition has started of having workshops. People who want to talk about things, who want to argue, they want to discuss and debate how to do things, have decided, okay, we'll have a stakeholder workshop. And we've been very pleased to provide the framework for them within the Congress organization. So you can see the seven there. Um, the first one, driverless trials and demonstrators. This is a practical session where people who are running trials come together and tell us about what's been going on. It's not going to be about technical things. What frequency did you use? How did your sensors work? It's issues like how did the local police react to your trials? How did the public react? What did your national press do? Were they enthusiastic, scared, excited, or what? We've then got one that takes the same issue in a slightly different dimension, automated and connected. What are the legal issues? Is it possible to get any sort of legal framework that's common across the three regions? Workshop three, as it says, how do you take something from the research lab 
and take a, a, an idea that looks promising and turn it into something that actually makes money. If freight logistics was the Cinderella, I'm not quite sure what four is because ports and the marine side have featured even less in the past in our congresses, despite the fact that so many of the Congress host cities have been on water. So we're remedying that this year. We've got the workshop and there's a lot of other sessions on freight in particular, ports and freight. And of course, Bordeaux itself is a very well-known port. Industry city collaboration for low carbon, I think that explains it. Stakeholder workshop six, organized by Paul Zerster from ITS South Africa, mobility in the non-traditional markets. <coughs> It's the, the BRIC countries, the um, developing as opposed to developed markets. What's the situation there for improving mobility? Workshop seven is slightly unusual. This is organized by the Dutch government who will have the next European Union presidency. And they're really looking to say, well, what's next after workshop one? Workshop one is discussing what's going on. What's going to happen next? What do we need to do? What are the gaps that we need to fill? So seven very different but linked workshops. This is something we borrowed from Detroit where they organized for the first time, I think they called it the Chief Technology Officers Summit, where they got the CTOs of a number of companies, uh, Chief Technology Officers, Chief Information Officers, got them together and said, we realize that you're all very commercial. You don't want to say too much about what you're doing in public, but what are the common problems? Are there common difficulties that can be discussed? And the answer is yes, there were, very much so. So we've got one of these, as it says, high-level technology on the plug-and-play city, representatives from around the world. How do you get a modern city where you've got all your technologies very easily joined together for the benefits of the users? And the matching one, same sort of approach, high-level technology experts on connected and automated driving. This is an idea of the um, general public sessions. We borrowed this from Tokyo, where for the first time they organized almost a public briefing. They got some experts, uh, put them in front of a very large audience, and got the people in the audience to answer to ask questions. Now, what does this mean? If I do this, is it safe? So we thought this is a very good thing. We're going to do the same. So we're running these general public sessions. And the first one is the autonomous driverless vehicles. People are worried about them. The press is telling them things that aren't strictly accurate or strictly true. So it's an opportunity to listen to people experts talking about it, but also for the audience to ask its own questions. Session two, another topic that is very often misunderstood, big data. What does it mean? Who's collecting it? Do I know about it? Where are they storing it? What do they know about me? Who is they? Who is Big Brother? So an opportunity to get the truth, get the facts from the experts, and again to ask them questions. And the third one of these, enhancing the quality of city life. Again, speakers from around the world, this is going to be a good one. I mentioned earlier that we've got an Urban Mobility Day and it's also a public session. Just thought it might be helpful just to collect together not all of the names, but most of the names of most of the speakers. So again, you can see people from across the world, people from big cities, people from wealthy countries, people from less so, all contributing on the Urban Mobility Day. We now come to the exhibition. I'm going to hand back to DDA, who will walk you through the exhibition, the demonstrations, and associated issues. Thank you, Eric. So here you see the, the plan of the exhibition hall. As you see, it's a quite long hall. Uh, everything will be, uh, you need to walk a little bit. 
uh, and it, it it has been divided in different zones. So we have the we have the first part, uh, which is the more the public authority part. So all the local authorities, the uh, transport ministries around the world, and uh, uh, ITS association. After that, we have the part on the demonstration, so all the demonstrators uh, are taking place there, and it includes also the demonstration launch where you will be able to register to the demonstration. The part two, it's, it's more um, dedicated to what we call the space uh, area, so it's the thematic that the host has uh, willing to put as a thematic for this Congress, so we have a dedicated place for them. And after we have the, the rest of the exhibition, and at the end of the exhibition, uh, we have the five session room that already uh, Eric explained. So we will have session room, session in the exhibition, uh, commercial session, interactive session, uh, general public session, and and all that. And after the session room, you will have the catering. So the catering will be inside the exhibition. So the exhibition in total is 25,000 square meters. We have 400 uh, exhibitors coming from more than 35 countries. So here I will go quickly through the list. Uh, it's several slides, but if you want more information, you can go to the website, click on exhibition, and you will have also the exhibition exhibitor list. So we see that it's coming from the three region. Okay. A long, long from uh, very small companies, SMEs, till very big, very big companies. Coming also from uh, local authorities, ministries, and cities. So. Coming back to demonstration, uh, so there is uh, more than 30 demonstrations that will be organized during the week. Uh, here you have the, the spread, so we have seven topics again, and we have demonstration in each topic, nine in automated driving, eight in cooperative system, four in space, three on urban mobility, three on sustainable mobility, one on big data, and four on multimodality. Again, if you want more information of, on the demonstration, uh, don't hesitate to go to the website of the Congress. You will have uh, all demonstrators classified by topic with a brief description. So on site, we will have more than 50 uh, vehicles making those demonstrations and expect to have some real first ones demonstration in real public uh, roads. In terms of registration, so currently the registration are open, and but the places are limited for this demonstration. Today, uh, online pre-booking is uh, open, but for the moment, it's exclusively reserved for uh, registered Congress delegate and speaker, moderator, and media. Uh, attendees uh, will be able to register uh, up to three demonstrations during the week for the moment, and on site you will be also able to register uh, at the demo launch on or through the um, app that we have developed for the Congress. We are also organizing other events in, the, in the parallel, uh, more dedicated to app developer or students. So. The two, the two events are the 24 of innovation, and the second one is a Nakaton. So first, the uh, 24 of innovation will be done the 8th and the 9th of October in a university close by the conference center. So basically, it's a competition be between students, uh, and they have to work together and brainstorm on ITS subjects. They have 24 hours to, to develop their ideas and their creativity, and then they have to present this in front of a jury. We will uh, give also some prizes and the awards will be given during the co 
co uh, closing ceremony. So it's really a good opportunity for students. Uh, so we encourage all the students to, to register this, to this event um, because it's also a good opportunity for them to meet the maybe future employer. The next one is the ITS Bordeaux Hackathon. So this event will be on uh, two days also, Monday and Tuesday. And there it's more dedicated to computer programmer and all people involved in software and app development. The objective is to build new web or mobile services around different ITS topic. And the winning team will be also awarded during a special uh, ceremony during the, I the ITS Urban Mobility Summit Thursday afternoon. So um, here you see the different services and data available for the hackathon. So Bordeaux Open Data, Traffic, Traffic Event, Datex2, MMTA, Glosa, RTTI, Voice Information. And the category of price for the moment, one will be on mobility uh, through the Mobinet uh, project, one on security, FIA, and one on truck services by RLU. It's really, really on real data, so you will, be, you will be able to have access to the data from, from Bordeaux, by example, and you need to develop something really concrete with, the, with those data. So again, we have a special web page on this. So thank you all of you to promote it and to, to, to see if you don't know a, a good app developer in your neighborhood or students that want to participate to this. So this year we have also a national session corner. So this is in fact uh, something that uh, the ITS uh, network of association in Europe has decided to, to take on board. So basically uh, it's uh, achievement in ITS and success stories from the Europe, Americas, and Asia Pacific region. And uh, you can, they will present you during the week in a speci special and dedicated room all those achievements and IT success stories. The last uh, facility that we will bring in, in the Congress is the B2B meeting facility. So basically, it's uh, an uh, a platform where you can register and you can uh, facilitate your business and partnership with other uh, visitors or uh, delegates. So you provide your company profile, your contact detail, and then the system will try to find out who and how you can meet other people who have also registered the system. We are uh, working closely with the French, Korean, and American trade association and also with some other ITS association to uh, enable this facility to make a success. If you want more information or if you want to participate, also go directly on the website. You have a link and you can go directly on this meeting facility. During the week, we will have also uh, seven technical visits. Again, it has been divided in our seven topics. Here you see, so traffic control, intelligent roads, traffic management center, ITS bridge, operation center, and also the multimodality uh, of the Bordeaux Arbor and uh, the Thales aircraft co cockpit technologies. So here I just can recommend you to register quite quickly because the registration are going quite fast for those technical visits. As Eric said already uh, previously, we have uh, also, also s uh, 17 associated events. Uh, you are able to register to all of them through the uh, registration system of the Congress. I will not go through all of them, but you see that we have from Sunday till Friday uh, several associated events running uh, during the day. Again, if you go on the website of the Congress, you will get more information about them. Of course, uh, we have not only that uh, 
many, many, many sessions, but we have also some uh, social events. So here you see uh, in a nutshell, so we have the welcome reception on Monday, the Bordeaux wine fair on the Tuesday, the gala dinner on Wednesday, and the cocktail on the exhibition uh, and on the stand of Vertico will be uh, Tuesday at 5 on ITS America stand will be at 5.30 and uh, at the Pacific region on 6 p.m. So a little bit more information now. So the welcome reception will run right after the uh, closing of the opening. Uh, you will be able to go to the exhibition. It will be open and then you will have a cocktail with your friends and your partners on the exhibition, on the stands, also in the alley of the, the exhibition and you will have, uh, you will get some canapes, so it will be a very nice first evening. The next day, after a long day of work, you will be able to go to the wine festival. So it will be uh, in the Bordeaux Stadium, which is 10 minutes walk from the Congress venue, and there you will have a tasting pass, so you can experience some uh, Bordeaux and Aquitaine wine from uh, 80 regional appellation and you will have also some appetizers to start well the evening. Uh, this Bordeaux World Festival, you can re still register, it's uh, the 30 euro uh, and uh, yeah, some places are still free, which is not the case for the gala dinner. So I hope you register already for the gala dinner because if not, then you will miss a very nice evening because it's already sold out. So it will be in the Chateau Lafitte on the Wednesday, 7th of October. And to finish this week, so for those who will arrive before or will stay later, uh, after the closing, then don't forget to, to try to have a look at the marvelous city of Bordeaux. Uh, which is a New Year's Co World Heritage, Heritage and uh, the 40 years of innovation that they have developed in the city. As you know, this kind of big event uh, cannot happen without some sponsor and some contributor. So here you see our wonderful list, an impressive list of uh, sponsors from uh, the platinum one on the top till the silver one at the bottom. So, of course, we are very thankful to all those sponsors for their support. As you know, uh, since also Vienna, we, we have uh, decided to make a, a Congress report. So, you will get this Congress report uh, uh, by the end of October. So. Please stay in touch. So, of course, we are now close to Bordeaux, but as you know, we are always running in parallel several other events. And as uh, maybe you know already, the next year the European Congress will be in Glasgow, 6 to uh, 9 June 2016. The team of the Congress will be delivering Future City Now, and it's organized by Artico in close cooperation for, with the Commission, and it will be hosted by Glasgow City and the Transport Contract. So in Bordeaux, you will be able to, to meet the people from, from Glasgow, and you will be able to get the call for paper also for Glasgow. <coughs> and the next year, World Congress, as you all know, it uh, will be in Melbourne, 10 to 14 of October 2016, so in Australia. Uh, and you have more information on, on their website. Uh, and the theme of the Congress is ITS Enhancing Livable City and Communities. So, Thank you all for having uh, followed us today. Uh, we do hope that this webinar gives you uh, more information about what you, what you will see and 
here during the week in Bordeaux from the 5th to 9th of October. And of course, we are looking forward to seeing you and to meeting you during the week. So now I think we have some time for question, and I see the screen adding questions. So I pass the floor to Pamela. That we ask the question. So uh, we are receiving some questions, and based of what you heard so far. We can start with the first one. Uh, with this presentation, we're currently seeing it will be made available to all registered attendees. It provides a very good snapshot of what to expect. Well, thanks for, for this. It's very good that this presentation was useful to you. And yes, we will make it available uh, either by sending uh, a specific link um, to a YouTube, or uh, probably we'll put it also on the Congress website. So. Um, you, it will be available uh, there. Uh, next question is uh, how to download the Congress app. So the Congress app will be uh, soon on uh, available on the platform. So app on App Store on uh, the other two platform is Microsoft platform and and Android. So as soon as everything is ready, because it's directly linked with the, the program, uh, we will send a message to all the registered people, and it will be an e-blast. So it would be uh, easy to download, uh, like we had already in uh, Dublin or in Helsinki. Then the next question is, um, if I'm too late to be in a demonstration, Am I still able to be a spectator of this demonstration? So yes, of course. So we have um, we have a lot of slots available. I can tell you it, it, there are a lot, but we have also some uh, demonstration who which allow only one person to be in a car, by example. So what we have done is to have also a public area where you can see what is happening. Uh, that's that's the, the yeah, the possibility for the moment. Question is that if I have the possibility to come to the Congress only for one day, which one will you suggest? Okay. That's, <laughs> that's a complicated question. That's back to the Olympics. If, if I can only have one ticket, what I can, what shall I buy? Um, if you're not interested in swimming, you wouldn't buy that. I think I would start by saying. Look at the three thematic days and see if one of those has got a particular appeal. The connected and automated driving is possibly going to be, um, I'm trying not to say vaguest, but I think it's probably the best word. This is all about something that is going to happen soon. It hasn't happened yet. There will be demonstrations linked to this. So it's all about future activities. So. If you're interested in what's coming, what's going to be next, where are things going, then choose the Tuesday, connected and automated day. If you're interested more on how does a city work, what can I do, um, are there ideas that other cities have tested which I can use in mine, that's Thursday. And Wednesday is the freight and logistics day. If you're in the supply business of any sort, or if you're, again, if you're in a city and you're interested in how do things, how do I manage the freight and supply to the people who live in my city, then I think Wednesday is the day. So I would say make your primary choice on that. You've then got the secondary problem of, well, there's an awful lot going on. But I think that's, that's my advice so far. Start with the choice of the day and then see where it takes you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, the next question is, when will the conclusions of the Ministerial Roundtable be published? Assuming there are some, <laughs> and with ministers you have to say that, um, I think the intention of the French organizers is that they will be made public um, sometime in November so that they feed into the planning for the big event in Paris in December, uh, the United Nations Global uh, Climate Change Conference. Um, 
but the problem inevitably is you've got if you if you choose to check what you're saying with every delegate it's as quick as the slowest person to reply so it could be later than that but my understanding is that they want to get a document issued um, ideally back end of October more likely early in November which is then a public feed into the December planning Um, with another question, uh, how the conclusion of the Congress are drawn and when they will be available? Right. Um, the answer to that is I have a wonderful team of observers, writers, rapporteurs who spend the week watching and listening to everything that's going on. They've already given me their first thoughts based on the contents of the papers and the specifications of the different sessions. So they've, they've sketched a picture of how they see the Congress being built. As the Congress goes on, they feed me with little bits of information, with sound bites, if you like, about what they've been to, the sessions they've been to. These I put together for the closing summary where I try to say in 15 or 20 minutes what has happened through the week. In the 10 days after the Congress, they supply me with more detailed texts. I then disappear for two weeks with a very large mug of coffee and try to take all of their input and turn it into the documents that were the three documents that were shown in the slide. My target is to get that report done by the end of October. I guess a following question uh, about availability so of presentations and, and papers um, presented during the Congress. When there will be the available date? So the, the aim is to, to provide access to the registered people, uh, to the presentation, uh, which will be already uh, on our systems, and also the, the paper that have been submitted uh, within one week bef minimum before the event starts. So maybe it's, it's easier for you to check the presentation to see if it's really what you want to see or to hear. Uh, that's. Uh, that's our aim for the moment, but all, of course we are depending also on the on the speaker if they put their presentation online already for, for consultation. But that's the aim. Uh, we have now a question about registration. Um, to when uh, people are able to register? Right. What? So uh, we, we, for technical reason, we have to close the registration some days in advance to be able to prepare everything on site. And uh, the last day to register, it's I think it's the 30 of September. After that, you, you need to be uh, you need to register directly on site. And the registration uh, opens the Monday at eight yeah. at eight uh, in the morning. So please, please be careful. Uh, anybody who wants to attend the opening ceremony should be registered and should take his badge at the registration desk before entering in the uh, Palais des Congrès. That's for security reasons. We cannot allow people uh, to, to enter. But any kind of badge uh, will be allowed to go in the opening ceremony. But you need to have your badge. Okay, uh, that was the last question that we received. Um, I guess if we do not receive any other questions within uh, now, <laughs> I guess we can uh, we can close our webinar. And again, I would like to to thank our panelists, um, to thank you for uh, joining us, and. It's just one month away. Tomorrow is one month away from, from Bordeaux. So thanks again and see you in Bordeaux.